Hi, I'm Bernie Hayes. On today's show, Erica M. Brooks. She's an all-time friend, longtime activist, and now a candidate for the Ferguson City Council. Today, on the Bernie Hayes Show. Welcome back. Erica, how are you? I am doing wonderful. I feel blessed. I thank you for allowing me to come here this morning. Oh, such a pleasure. Wow, I mean, we go back for so many years. Uh, you, you know, you've been so active in, in different things since you left Missouri. You, you, you set some track records at the University of Missouri, didn't you? Yes, yes, I did. Uh, in 2000, and, uh, I'm sorry, in uh, 1992, uh, I set the school record there, and I'm an All-American there as well. Uh -huh. And I was just six feet shy of going to the Olympic trials in 93. Uh, so I've made some marks at University of Missouri-Columbia. And what was your degree in, Erica? My degree was in history, and I had a minor in zoology, and I actually graduated uh, from Western Illinois University. Wow, okay. Mm -hmm. You know, at, at the first time you were on the program here, at uh, Channel 24, you were fighting vigorously to save Lincoln High School in East St. Louis, Illinois. I mean, you made a tremendous effort. Tell us about that and why. Well, you know, East St. Louis Lincoln is a powerhouse of legends, and I just couldn't see that building being uh, demolished or just leaving, just taking away the life of uh, East St. Louis. Yeah. And, you know, Miles Davis was there. Uh, I have a friend uh, named Mr. Abraham W. Bolden, who was the first African-American Secret Service agent who was appointed by President John F. Kennedy, who was uh, in attendance there. You had the legendary uh, Dr. Lillian Parks. Yeah. Uh, I, mean, you, I mean, this goes on and on, and I just couldn't see. You got Jackie Joni Kersey, that's also a, uh, an alumni of Lincoln Senior High School, and I'm a... Uh, alumni as well. So I just couldn't see that just folding up and b disappearing like everything else. There's so much history that's gone from Lincoln, from East St. Louis. So mm -hmm. uh, in 2012, I was out there uh, with a lot of other alumni that, that showed up and was saying the same thing. Let's keep this building. Yeah. I mean, you fought vigorously for it. Uh, and everyone remembers you for that because you, you really made an effort and uh, it made a difference too. I'm just so sorry that they still close that, that school. I guess a lot of politics was involved in that. Was it, uh, That's always. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's always. But, you know, like I said, I, I pray to God that some someday somebody take the interest in investing in that building and keeping some of East St. Louis history because they've demolished so much of it that, you know, it's, it seems impossible for them to just rip that building out. And, and like, it should be some kind of a multi-purpose building or some kind of museum or something to represent our legacy in East St. Louis. Certainly, East St. Louis, yeah. Uh, what have you been doing since then, Erica? I'm sorry? What have you done since then? What have you been at? What I, I know the, the Ferguson School, I mean Ferguson bus line. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna ask you about that very soon. But you've been doing some things after Lincoln. Well, you know, uh, I've had several empowerment programs that I've had on both sides of the water in St. Louis and mm -hmm. in East St. Louis. Right. Uh, but I was also the general chairperson of the 135th anniversary in Ferguson, Missouri, uh, because just after the unrest of uh, the Michael Brown uh, murder right. by by the former uh, Ferguson police Ferguson police officer. Sure. sure. Um, I was a volunteer at my son's school during that time as well. Right. So that his his school was two blocks away from uh, the police station, and so it was uh, going through a whole lot of turmoil where bricks were thrown through the window, BB pellets were shot through there. The principal was uh, threatened by KKK, and so I partnered with her as a as my uh, job is was freelance media photographer, and I let her know what was going on where so that they could be safe. And as a, a way of showing gratitude to me, she allowed me to be the general, tramp, general chairperson for the 135th anniversary. And um, so I made it a point of peace to right. where um, I had Channel 9 to come out there and they covered it. And it's called Central Elementary Celebration. So people can go on living in St. Louis and see the whole uh, celebration where I had uh, President Obama to recognize it. I had the county 
they they recognize the day of our uh, event, which was May the 26th, 2015, as right. um, uh, Central Elementary School Day. So it was a huge <laughs> success. Yeah, I remember that. Also, Erica, you're now a professional photographer. How'd you come into the media? Well, you know, um, <laughs> my mom, she used to always carry a camera when I was a little girl. And no matter where we went, she pulled out a camera. And so um, over the years, I kind of indirectly fell off into it because I had to have work study. I, I fell off into uh, videography first with uh, the late Gloria Jackson from East St. Louis and Mr. Willie Walker. And mm -hmm. later on in 2007, uh, my auntie used to work at uh, St. Louis American. And I began my internship there with the legendary award-winning Wiley Price. Yeah. And so from there, you know, I started my own business, uh, Business Plus Photography. And so I've been capturing history throughout the country, not just uh, in the metro area, but I've traveled. I went to Obama's, both of his inaugurations. I've been to Michael Jackson's uh, memorial, Brent, uh, Isaac Hayes Memorial. I've been to several places, yeah. so, yeah. And, and covering this area as well. Well, why is actually the one who introduced me to you? Wow, wow, uh, Price. Remember that? You remember that? It, yeah, years, you know, years, actually, years Alvin ago. Parks, Alvin Parks, when we, you, know, you all right. were down there at Love Joy Elementary School. Years ago. Yes. Years ago. <laughs> Erica, now you are. Uh, you were involved in saving a bus line in, in Ferguson. Yes. Tell, tell us about that. Tell, well, now, I think that's on your uh, uh, picture of it uh, on your um, brochure, right? Yes, yeah. yes, yes. Well, you know, as a resident of Ferguson, like I said, for 10 years now, uh, I have learned to uh, understand the history of it because, you know, when I moved there, I had no clue that it was a lot of, uh, entrenched uh, systematic racism going on out there in Ferguson. Yeah. And so the street that I live on is legendary because it's the last street before you get off into Kenlock. And I through, through uh, studying, I found out it's that point where I live at that black people couldn't use, go through there. And so um, the bus line where I, caught, I, I catch it at is two blocks away from that. And so we used to go to the bus and one day it popped up on my phone that that bus ride was about to be discontinued. And I was like, oh, no, there's no way, you know. So we pursued a year-long campaign, my son and I, Gabriel Quentin Cornelius, and we uh, started a petition. I went, went out to, uh, to the bi-state uh, commissionary meetings. I went to the county meetings. I uh, reached out to the, since our city did not support keeping our bus route, I had to reach out to a federal level. I reached out to former Congressman William Lacey Clay, my state rep, uh, Rachel Prouty, my state senator, uh, Brian Williams, the Missouri Transportation Department, and the U.S. Department of Justice. I mean, I reached out the real far to say, hey, we need the bus line. Yeah. And through all that uh, campaigning, and, and I did a business survey as well, because once we retained the bus route, I found out that the city had sent in a letter saying that, that we didn't need access to a bus after 7 or even not, even not at all on weekends in the business district. Mm -hmm. So that was our second victory, which was not only just retain it, but to have access in the business district after seven and on weekends. So like I say, I thank the community for stepping up and saying, we want change, we want to keep access to affordable and convenient public transportation. And like I said, they made a difference. And now I'm asking them now to uh, ask me to keep me as a representation for our community as a city councilwoman. You won that fight. Yes. You yes. won that fight. Bus number 79 and bus number 79X. Yes. That's so, a yes. great fight. Erica, yes. now you go devoting your life to public service. You're running for the council, yes. for city council, uh, for the city of Ferguson. We only got about two minutes left. Just briefly tell me why. We'll come back and discuss it at length. Uh, why, why are you running? Well, I'm running because we need representation. Like I said, I mean, I, going through that year long campaign, I was canvassing the community and reaching out to the people. And they, and they were telling me their concerns during that time, which was, uh, you know, they want to address the derelict housing. They want to address speeding. They want to address uh, com community policing. They want to address uh, us coming together and uh, hearing their voice, you know. Mm -hmm. So and, and going through that campaign, I felt like I was a person to be able to do all those things at this moment. And so I pursued becoming a city councilwoman. Okay, want to come back and talk about that. Uh, Erica M. Brooks for Ferguson City Council, <coughs> War Two on Tuesday, April the 6th, 2021. We're here at the New Life Evangelistic Center, <coughs> 2428 Woodson Road in Overland, Missouri. And uh, Reverend Larry Rice, who was operating New Life Evangelistic Center, 
1411 Locust Street downtown St. Louis, Missouri, have transferred those services here. But we're still trying to get that facility open. <clears throat> we'll be back with our guests after this. Will you help New Life Evangelistic Center get back into 1411 Locust Street? Your tax deductible gifts are urgently needed at this particular time. And there's many different ways that we're working to get back in that facility. One of the ways is to continue to inform the community through the Bernie Hayes Show and other programs. And if you haven't supported the Bernie Hayes Show and the work of New Life Evangelistic Center, please do it now. It's urgently needed. Your gifts are deeply appreciated. So many homeless people are waiting to get back into 1411 Locust. And so many others need the direct help that New Life is trying to provide at this time. But it's facing some real financial needs. And that's why your gift is very, very important. And to express our thankfulness for all of you that are sharing your gifts, we want to send you this special Bernie Hayes cup. It's my wife's favorite drinking cup. She loves to drink out of this cup, and this is actually the only coffee cup she wants to use is the Bernie Hayes cup. It's something very special about this cup, and we'll send it to each one of you that share a gift of $25 or more with the New Life Evangelistic Center and ask for your Bernie Hayes cup. It's P.O. Box 473, St. Louis, Missouri, that's 63166. Your gift will not only help us get back into the 1411 Locust Building, but will help our first responders that are on the streets, the first responders that we have out there day after day, night after night. It will help keep our uh, women and children in our safe houses, continue to keep our training programs open, our worldwide mission work, whether it's in India, Haiti, Africa, so many different things the New Life Evangelistic Center is doing. In addition to NLEC TV, Tell your family and friends about it. Put it on your phone. Put on your, uh, get that phone app on all your friends' phones so they can all see the Bernie Hayes Show or go to 24.2. It's your prayers and gifts that make all of this possible. I thank God for those of you who continue to pray for the reopening of 1411 Locust and the work of New Life Evangelistic Center. There's so many obstacles we're facing as we try to help the homeless, but we're going to continue to give it to God. We're going to continue to pray. We're going to continue to work, but we need you to partner with us. So again, it's New Life Evangelistic Center, P.O. Box 473, St. Louis, Missouri, the 63166. I thank God for each one of you that are praying, caring, and sharing. Welcome back. I'm Bernie Hayes, and my guest is Erica M. Brooks for Ferguson City Council, Tuesday, April the 6th, 2021, Second Ward. Now, now, Erica, what are the boundaries of, of that uh, Second Ward? Well, um, the boundaries, if you go... To the west side, my street is the last street, which is Mueller. And then if you go uh, to the north side, the street is, uh, what is that called, uh, Buckeye. Mm -hmm. uh, if you go over, like, like go south, you have the North Elizabeth area as well as uh, South Barrack, South Barrett, uh, okay. and also uh, Ferguson Avenue area. Okay. Why, why did you choose public service now? Because you, you've been in a lot of fights and you won most of them. Uh, and now there's this challenge to, to run for a councilwoman. Mm -hmm. how, how do you, what difference do you want to make? What, what, why did you do this? Well, you know, basically most of the time that I did get involved in uh, public service in the community, uh, I don't think I chose it. I think it chose me mm -hmm. because I saw situations where uh, leadership was needed. Uh, and I need to step up because I didn't want to wait on someone else to take that charge because it, is like, it didn't seem like it's something was going to be done. Yeah. Uh, whether it was uh, coaching for the youth, uh, whether it was substitute teaching in the East St. Louis School District, Belleville, Cahokia, um, various areas. Uh, mm -hmm. And then also, like I said, uh, in the industry that I'm working in and also have my business in, which is business plus photography. Um, you know, I, I, I just, I mean, I worked for various politicians over the years. Yeah. I was uh, the former mayor, East St. Louis, um, Mayor Gordon Bush, um, and also Mayor Alvin Parks, right. Jr. And so I've seen, I've seen uh, different things in the community that they have accomplished, and I've also think, seen things where I could connect some other uh, people and resources together to become solutions for people. Okay. And so that's why I started doing empowerment programs to connect those people. And throughout connecting the people, it, it inspired me to say, okay, maybe I can step up in those political position, this, this political position as a city councilwoman, and be that voice that I had to be as the grassroots organizer to obtain our bus route. Right. 
So tell us how we can reach you. We have phone number, website, email, and so forth. Well, uh, my phone number is 314-243-2805. Um, my email is embcfcc2021 at yahoo.com. And on my Facebook page, you can reach me at Friends for Erica M. Brooks. Friends for Erica M. Bush on Brooks, Facebook. Yes, yes. Brooks. Yes. <laughs> well, we forgot to talk about Gordon Bush then. Yes. Because <laughs> <laughs> I know you were very close to Gordon Bush and also Alvin Parks. Yes. And I know you did a lot of work for them. Plus, you did a lot of work for East St. Louis and for the city of St. Louis. Not only St. Louis in general, but the community at, community at large. And then also I was a, a yeah. photographer for the now Mayor Ferguson, Mayor Ella M. Jones. I okay. did her social media as well for sure. the campaign. So you and uh, Ella Jones, who's also been a guest on this program, mm -hmm. are, are pretty close. And, and she's supporting you, I assume. That's great. Okay. So, so what, what, what's the basic? Is, is there any particular or one item that you want to focus on as councilwoman? Well, I know... Um, it's maybe two things I really want to focus in on. Okay. I want to focus in on public safety. Mm -hmm. uh, I know in the community, uh, that as a result of the Mike Brown situation, they've been working on a consent de decree uh, to pretty much engage the police more so with the community on a personal level and a, a, on a level to be able to represent us and not just police us, but you know, protect us mm -hmm. and also um, be able to uh, engage with the school system and, and be able to engage with businesses at large. And so uh, public safety, making sure people are safe and then also making sure that we address the dirt houses that are in our neighborhood because uh, I also was the team leader for War Two, which I'm running in, um, okay. for the cleanup, the citywide cleanup last year. Okay. And so, in, in, in doing so, I had to case the whole ward to see where the derelict houses were and, and people where people needed to go to clean up. And so, it, it really just touched me that we had so many derelict houses. So, that's one of the factors. Another factor that I want to address are the derelict houses and uh, uh, the connecting people for beautification and just uplifting our neighborhoods. Uh, just continually um, monitoring our access to public transportation to make mm -hmm. sure that, that that continues to flow through there. Because, yeah. like I said before, um, that bus route used to go through Kenlock at one point. And I was told through, hit, through, through a resident that the, but the bus state uh, company didn't want to stop in Kenlock. They just wanted to use it as a thoroughfare. And the mayor at the time, he told them that you can't use our community as a thoroughfare. And if you don't want to stop and get our people, you can stop coming through here. And it stopped for 10 years. Yeah. And um, when I heard that, I said, there's no way that I can see this bus route ever leaving our community again. And so uh, that's why I, I pursued that uh, successfully to, to retain our bus route 79 and also inspire 79X. I know you're not afraid of a challenge. And, uh, no, sir. You know, and also when Reverend Rice heard that you were going to be my guest today, he wanted to say thank you personally because I know you got involved with uh, this closing down of New Life Evangelic Center downtown. You took a lot of photographs. You were there for the marches and so forth. Mm -hmm. And he just wanted to say thank you for all that because you, he knows you're an activist and you've always been an activist. And uh, we wanted to say thanks for, for all the access that you gave New Life Evangelic Center, Erica. And, you know, I want to thank you too, Mr. Hayes, because mm -hmm. I know in the beginning when I started my petition, you were the first person that I called to get the guidance of a person I need to talk to to have an official p petition. And you told me to call Mr. Percy, Percy Green, Green II. Yeah. <laughs> right. So I want to reach out to him and tell him thank you as well for being the civil rights leader that he is because I had to stand on the shoulders of true legendary civil rights leaders to understand where to go and how to get there. And I want to thank Mr. Zaki Baruti as well for stepping in. Uh, with his organization uh, to be there to to support us. Certainly. But you've su supported all these other organizations that you just mentioned also tremendously. Uh, Erica, once again, do you need volunteers and do you need help and how can they reach you? Oh, yeah. I definitely need volunteers to knock on doors. Uh, I need mm -hmm. volunteers to be able to do phone banking. I need volunteers just to be able to come together so we can reach out to the community. Uh, my phone number is 314-243-2805. My email is embcfcc2021 uh, at yahoo.com. 
And like I said, my Facebook page name is Friends for Erica M. Brooks. Okay. And, and, and in this interview, I want to also, last but not least, thank my mother for being the rock that she is and, uh, and, and just being there at the meeting to be able to retain our bus route as well because it was her suggestion that resulted in the bus route that we have today. So I want to also thank my mother for, for being there for every step that I go. Okay. Do you need cash donations? Oh, yes. <laughs> That's and once again, how, how can they do that? Okay. Now, if people wanted uh, to give donations and contributions, they can go to uh, Act Blue and go under my name, Erica M. Brooks, and you will see uh, my page for donations. Once again, how, how can we do that? Once, repeat that. Uh, go to Act Blue, A C T Blue. And type in my name and you will see my, my page for donations. And so, like I said, I want to thank the people so far that have been helping me. Uh, my son and, and my, my son's friend, Aaron, uh, who've been out helping me knock doors. Uh, I want to thank uh, Mr. Keith Anton Willis, uh, Mayor Alvin Parks, former mayor of East St. Louis, mm -hmm. and, and various, you know, like I said, yourself, Mr. Hayes, and various other people that have been reaching out and helping me, and Mr. Uh, Walton okay. and and uh, stay rep Mike Person and Miss Theta the oh. Person as well. Okay, we're going to take another short break, Erica. We'll come back and discuss your candidacy after this. We'll be right back. So many people need hope at this particular time. The coronavirus has destroyed hope in the lives of so many people. That's why I thank God for the Zakib Rudy show and Bernie Hayes shows and other shows that New Life Evangelistic Center is able to give you on NLEC TV or 24.2, but we must do even more. And that's why I thank God for their partnership so that together we can offer people direct help those that are homeless, a place to come and live. Those that are hungry, food. Those that need help on the utility assistance, direct assistance. And all this is possible because of each one of you that are partnering with the New Life Evangelistic Center. You can do that by sharing your much needed gift with New Life Evangelistic Center at P.O. Box 473, St. Louis, Missouri. That's 63166. You give online at NLECSTL.org. It's your partnership that makes it possible for New Life Evangelistic Center and its growing team of workers to be there when people are hurting. So join us in helping people set free from the cycle of homelessness. Please share your much needed gift now. It's New Life Evangelistic Center, P.O. Box 473, St. Louis, Missouri. Our Black History piece today is for Howard Washington Thurman, who was born November the 18th, 1899. He was a key mentor to leaders within the civil rights movement, including Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. He was an American author, philosopher, theologian, educator, and a civil rights leader. As a prominent religious figure, he played a leading role in many social justice movements and organizations of the 20th century. Thurman's theology of radical nonviolence influenced and shaped a generation of civil rights activists. Thurman served as dean of the Rankin Chapel of Howard University from 1932 to 1944, and as dean of Marsh Chapel of Boston University from 1953 to 1965. In 1944, he co-founded, along with Alfred Fisk, the first major interracial interdenominational church in the United States. Howard Thurman died on April 10, 1981, in San Francisco, California. Howard Thurman. Hear this, you who trample the needy and do away with the poor of the land. Let justice roll on like a river, righteousness like a never-failing stream. You trample on the poor and force him to give you grain. Therefore, though you have built stone mansions, you will not live in them. Though you have planted lush vineyards, you will not drink their wine. For I know how many are your offenses and how great your sins. You oppress the righteous and take bribes, and you deprive the poor of justice in the courts. And welcome back. My guest is Erica M. Brooks. She's a candidate for the City Council of Ferguson, Missouri, Ward 2. And uh, Eric is also the one that saved that bus route in Ferguson that uh, they were about to actually dismiss, take down, stop running it. But uh, she was uh, <laughs> more or less the person that saved that bus route for so many thousands of persons. Erica, the, uh, the election is when? April the April the 6th, 2021. April the 6th. Yes, Tuesday. So how, what about registration and, and, and the importance of voting? Well, it is very, very, very important that people come out, our citizens of Ferguson, 
come out. If you want change, if you don't want the same traditional situations that are going on right now, uh, come out and vote. You know, the 23rd of February was the first day for absentee voting. Mm -hmm. So you can go out to the Board of Elections at 725 Northwest Plaza and go and do your absentee voting. You can go online, you know, and you can do it that way as well. The last day to register to vote uh, is March the 10th. Okay. So, you know, go ahead and get registered. You can go to the Missouri um, Secretary of State website and get registered on, on there. Or like I said, go to the Board of Elections and, and get registered there as well or ask for a registration by mail. So, so they shouldn't wait till the last minute. They should go, actually go on and take care of that now, right? Yes. And it's yes. easy to do. Yes, you can go ahead. Like I said, go ahead and uh, make that make that choice to be a part of the change, because we need. I need your voice. We need to be a team. It's not going. I can't do it by myself. Mm -hmm. And so, if you give yourself the license to be able to have a voice together by registering to vote, we can make that change in Ferguson. Okay. And like I said, the date of election is Tuesday, April the sixth. 2021 and like I said we need you we need we need change because like I say when it came to that bus route our city of Ferguson did not stand up for us I had to reach beyond Ferguson on a federal level to be able to get help in the state level and, and so looking at that myself I, I didn't work for a whole seven months to make sure I was on that bus route making sure we had access to public transportation so like I said right now I need your vote so I need you to register, get out there and stand up, speak up and make a difference in our community because mm -hmm. we can't stay in the same traditional uh, rut of uh, just going for the normal. Mm -hmm. County yeah. Circuit Attorney Wesley Bell also uh, came out of Ferguson and came out of that movement that you also participated in. And he went uh, for the city council. He won. And now he's the county executive, county uh, prosecutor. Right. Mm -hmm. So uh, is that the same war that Wesley was in? That, that, that sure is the same, same place. Same, same place. Yes, yes. So as you can see, um, Ferguson is the ground root of needing some change, some justice, some representation. Yeah. And voting is, that, is the access to that change. You know, all, every, everybody that's coming through there, you have uh, Mayor Ella M. Jones, who's the first African-American female mayor sure. that's there right now. That came through voting. You all came out tremendously because I also electioneered for her. So when it came to seeing you all out there in those lines that said, I want change. When it came for the presidency, this time for President Joe Biden and, and, and Kamala Harris, I was out there uh, electioneering and the lines were wrapped around the building, the parking lot. It said, we want change. So this is what I'm asking for today that you all say, you know, just because it's not a presidential election, you don't just say, oh, well, we don't make a difference. No, every vote, every voice makes a difference. Okay. And in order to uh, uh, make that difference and I change in our community on Tuesday, April 6th, I'm going to need you to come out. I'm first on the ballot, Erica M. Brooks, for a Ferguson City Councilwoman in, in War Two. So, mm -hmm. like I said, you can get in contact with me by calling me at 314-243-2805. Or you can email me at embcfcc2021 at yahoo.com. Or you can go to my Facebook page at Friends for Erica and Brooks. And if you want to donate to my campaign, you can go to Ag Blue and look up my name, Erica and Brooks, and you can financially support the uh, financially support, support my your campaign. campaign. Mm -hmm. Erica, I can't tell you how much I appreciate seeing you. Always such a good friend. You've been so good friends so, oh, for so many years. I just wish you the very, very best. And thank you for coming by and supporting the New Life Evangelical Center, as you always have. I, have a great day, Erica. Have a great campaign. And we wish you the best. And we'll see you very soon. Thank you. Have thank a good so day. Much. And I want to thank each and every one of you for also supporting Channel 24.2 in LEC TV and the New Life Evangelistic Center. I'm Bernie Hayes. Until next time, please be safe. Take care of yourself. Stay, stay safe.